Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. We're your hosts, Calvin Timms and Dale Terry. Got it right this time. Didn't call you Dynasty Dale. <laughs> I, I your, appreciate not it. Not your name, just your handle, right? <laughs> uh, you can find us over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin at Dynasty underscore Dale. And today we're going to be talking through the second half of the rookie draft, recapping that that Dale just went through. Um, this is one of his leagues, but. Before we get there, thank you guys for joining us. You know, if you can follow us on Twitter or on uh, YouTube, podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Google, everywhere else that podcasts are found. While you're there, if you don't mind just leaving a comment, review, subscription, whatever it is to help with the podcast, we do appreciate it from you guys. Uh, Tuesday it was, we put out round one, recapping some of the picks, kind of chalk up until the end. Only a couple mm-hmm. picks that really stood out that were bad, in my opinion. Um, or against what the teams really needed. So not terrible in the first round, but the second round, you guys are going to see it here soon. It, it it gets a little bit more wild pretty quickly. It gets wild, definitely. Um, <laughs> so that was Tuesday. Yesterday I did come out with a video talking about Tank Bigsby versus Travis Etienne, talking about who the number one RB is going to be in Jacksonville and how you should price them accordingly. Uh, spoiler alert, I won't I won't spoil it. I'll let you go watch the video. You can go see my there thoughts over there. Um, but yeah, it's not a long video by any means. It's only 15 minutes, giving a breakdown into Doug Peterson and his coaching philosophy and his usage of the running backs and a little bit of a prediction, a more in-depth prediction on Bigsby and ETN. So go check that video out as well. Um, I think it's very helpful, especially with these two players just exploding in popularity right now. So absolutely, if you have them or if you're looking at buying one of these two guys, definitely check that video out. So Dale, that said, how are we doing today? Hey, I am doing good. Uh, it is Wednesday. It feels like Friday. I've only been at work two days. It's felt like a lifetime. I can't wait for the weekend. Yeah, right. I always, just be uh, honest. I love those uh, four day work weeks because they're great, but it's just so hard to be motivated in those. It weeks, is right? extremely hard. Oh yes. my gosh. So, um, yeah, if you're out there and you're feeling it, let us know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's rough. It is rough. Yes. Can't wait to be retired. One of my oh, absolutely. quick side tangent here. One of the, uh, one of my coworkers was talking to one, one of those mega Powerball million lotteries or jackpots or whatever a couple of years ago. Oh, if I won this, I'd I'd probably still work part time once or <laughs> oh, a couple of weeks, like maybe a week a month or something like that. Right? Like, yeah, right. if I win a, a billion dollars, I'm out of here. You're never gonna see me. Yeah, again. deuces, will, <laughs> deuces. Like I am yes, not I doing agree. this. I love my job. Don't get me wrong. I love my job, right. but I am not doing this for fun. You know, like no, there are no. a million other things I would rather do <laughs> than work all day. Right? So uh, right. I just found it funny. She was like. She's the nicest lady too, but I was just like, "You're crazy! I'm I'm out of here. <laughs> Let me get that money and I'm gone. Um, I'll help you with the last of my projects that I've I've got open and then I'm out." But um, yeah, so that said, let's jump into round two and round three here, and we're gonna go a little bit quicker today. We got a little. It's more fun to talk about the first round, right? Because the the players are a little bit more relevant. Um, Mm -hmm. You expect a lot more from them, but in rounds two and rounds three, you're kind of just filling in the gaps at that point. And uh, that's where it can get very, very interesting. So um, go ahead and break down the roster. Well, we're going to avoid breaking down the rosters. We're going to just talk about kind of some of the opportunity costs here in rounds two and Mm -hmm. rounds three. It should help speed things up a little bit there. Um, we're going to talk about like who they have elsewhere at this position, you know, before they yep. made this pick and then who they could have taken um, and if they would have been a better fit for their team, for example. But other than that, we're not going to, I'm not going to tell you, oh, this guy rosters Derek Carr when he took Zach Charbonnet, right? So right, it's right. not really relevant there. So go ahead and give us the breakdown on pick two one here and uh, let us know your thoughts. All right, so on on the on the two hundred one uh, at, at running back, this guy has uh, Javante Williams. Uh, he has really just a uh, Javante and Damien Harris is really it in Buffalo. So um, with that, you know, in in this league, it's 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 a it's a basically a best ball league, but you got to set a lineup. 
basically. So right. Um. So it's you know it's nine flex and a quarterback. So you know it, <laughs> it one is. Of them, it's, one of them it's, is it's a super wild. flex, right? So you have yeah, eight yes, flex, y- yes. a super flex, and a quarterback. And a quarterback. Yes. So it's wild. And with that, you know, uh, teams, uh, like we kind of noticed that it pretty was, it pretty much was chalk in, in the, in the first round. And like this guy took Zach, Zach Charbonnet, which I think is, can, can really be a home run pick. And, can um, be. you know, it, be a it, 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 it definitely can be, you know, <laughs> and I don't think, I think at two, one, I think it's perfect value. I think, yeah. I think it's, yeah. I think it's great value for him, honestly. I agree so, with that. You know. I will say I, I do agree with that. Um, Zach Charbonnet, especially when you get when, like you said, um, Damian Harris, Javante Williams, mm-hmm. you know, that's really all he had at running back going into this draft. Yep. You know, didn't have a ton of picks there either. Um, no first round pick, and which is unfortunate considering he was the one one. So yeah, uh, well, he well, got well, well, I will that. say that I, I I will say yes, he did. I think he got okay. like a couple firsts and a player. Like it okay. it was a pretty big trade that went. Down. I think it was a three team trade. It was okay. It was okay. a pretty big trade that 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 went down. So even up Bijan when you need running backs is <laughs> I know and that's, that's rough, and, man. That's and someone rough. that could be a generational talent. That you, <laughs> yes, I know. Right, I know. Um, so no, like you said. I, I do agree. I personally, and this is getting down to my bias. Like, I still think Kendra Miller is going way too late in these rookie drafts. That, that, that's fair. I, that's fair. I'm telling you guys, he's going to catch up eventually. Um, I know. It, I do believe that the dynasty community is going to catch up on his value. Mm-hmm. He'll keep taking him in the early second while he can. But mm-hmm. and the fact that he's RB four here, I've seen him go as RB five and even RB six in in some drafts. So that's wild. Kendrick Miller is just being massively undervalued, and I get the upside on Zach Charbonnet, but if you remember, mm-hmm. he, way back in the start of the rookie rankings, I actually had Kendrick Miller one spot. You know, these guys were 3A and 3B. Ultimately, I put, um, I originally had Miller as the A and Charbonnet as the B. And mm-hmm. I flip-flopped them, you know, before the actual draft. After the draft, I flipped them back, but these guys are still back-to-back, and I'm just taking yeah. the potential upside in Miller, who, who only has Alvin Kamara to compete with. Who you know, let's be honest. Well, Alvin Kamara I, 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 is. I, 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 I mean, it's Kamara. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's Kamara and Jamal Williams. Well, but neither well, one of those Calvin. guys are spring chickens, right? They're both 28 I know that. plus. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so I know. Just, I know. I yeah. agree. Meanwhile, Charbonnet is competing with Kenneth Walker the third, who was a superstar last year, right? As it was a rookie. Fantastic so last year. Yes. You know, it, it, that's the the tiebreaker for me right so um but that said again you're you're splitting hairs here i think charbonnet is going to be a good player just not the upside mm-hmm. of miller so don't hate that there um two two let's see who did this guy also have it, it was roster? yeah it was uh it was case sutton like he did have well like at, in, in in the one three spot like he did pick uh anthony richardson and uh running back he had he has rashad white james cook isaiah pacheco and that was it at Ooh, running. Ooh, that's rough, man. And he took. It he is went, very. It is. He went with Jonathan is, Mingo here, and he had back to back picks. So uh, he had the two yes. two and the two three. He two, goes three. Yes. Mingo and Rice. Who were his other receivers? So he had Brandon Cooks, Tyler Boyd, Paris Campbell, Yikes. Gabe Davis, Alec Pierce, Sky Moore. Not a great group of receivers. So I do understand some of that panic, but man. Passing up Kendra Miller for Rashi Rice, I think, is a mistake. Um, if you want to take a stab on Mingo, I get it. Like I do, mm-hmm. I don't love it personally, but I can understand. I can see the path to relevance for Jonathan Mingo, right? And yeah, yes, um, I, I definitely can. Rashi Rice, though, you have Sky Moore. Like I don't love any of the pass catchers on Kansas City right now. They are going. I like. I mean. I mean. The the only one I like is Travis Kelsey. Right. If that's right. if that's anything. Yeah, they're but kind yes, of going. Yes. They're going through their receiving core. What the Niners are doing with their running backs, right? They have a million guys. They're all good at points, right? But yep. other than Christian McCaffrey, you really don't want to start any of them. That's same with with the Kansas City pass catchers. It's Kelsey and nobody else. So. I don't love that. Um, I think that was a little bit of an overreaction, but I, 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 I feel that's very high, you know, like, well, 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 like for instance, like, especially like with, I'm see, I'm not like, I like Josh Downs, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I think, I would I think take Marvin Mims the, at least, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the very least, yes, I I agree there. So all right, so you know, I mean, it, it's 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 people's preferences, yeah, I guess. So again, I I think it's I understand the preferences, but when you already have Sky Moore, I think that's a mistake. So. Yeah. I will knock this pick a little bit heavily. If you don't want to go running back, I do understand that. Like I can mm-hmm. I can see that argument here, but at least go someone like a Downs, Mims, a Hyatt, not a Hyatt, yes. Not someone who was off she most people's that. draft boards yes. and then got overdrafted it, by the Chiefs, right? So Yes, 100%. All right, so you're up here at two four. You know we recapped quite a few of your picks in round one. You're mm-hmm. going with the rebuild, right? The the pretty heavy rebuild right now. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, and I remember you you were texting me about this pick, <laughs> asking yeah. who you should take. And uh, I'm glad yeah. you listened to me with Kendra Miller, dude. He's just he's so good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Good. I, I was I was I felt really good about Kendra Miller. I mm-hmm. I mean I wouldn't have mind Charbonnet dropping to me at two four, but right. I you know, I I knew he wasn't gonna. Sure. So and and there was no real other running back that I really wanted sure. on on the board at the, at that point. I mean I I I, I really thought about uh um uh, a a Devon A chain. I know. Um, I really, I really, really thought about him, but <laughs> I'm glad you know, I was I mean, able other, to convince uh, you not to do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, other than that, I have DeAndre Swift, Clyde, AJ a. Dillon, right? James Cook, two and in Acres, man. yeah, <laughs> yeah, ba- yeah, basically. So, yeah, so yeah, I mean, and and that's why I went Miller. I feel there's a lot of pass catching opportunity in that mm-hmm. offense, and I think I, I feel that. I feel that Kendra Miller could be what Josh Jacob what Josh Jacobs was at least catching wise last year in Vegas. So right, yeah, we can we'll see how that kind of plays out. But I I do believe that Kendra Miller is going to be pretty good. I do think that yes. he's going to be really good. And we have not gotten any confirmation on the Kamara suspension, but man, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, later. and it's yeah, going to happen. Yep, and. Kamara, he's just not the same guy under this system. You know, you get rid of. It's just not. Yeah. You get rid of Drew Brees and he falls apart. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not necessarily 100%. a coincidence, right? So, um, yeah, I don't love that. But then you had the next pick as well, two five Marvin Mims. Mm-hmm. I do love this pick. I was gonna say you were, you went a little RB heavy, but you were able to get JSN in round one, um, mm-hmm. Marvin Mims in round two. You you pair that with someone like Amari Cooper. Um, you're a little light on receivers right now. Yeah, I'm. Say. I'm for. Yeah, I. I would say the only ones I really like are Amari Cooper, Tim Patrick, potentially. Right. And that's about it. I mean, I. I. I do. I do have Jason and Mims, but mm-hmm. you know, th- those are unproven guys. Sure. So, and if if you really wanted to, you could try and, and I would probably recommend this. You know, free advice for you. But yeah. uh, <laughs> if Swift starts off a little hot, I'd probably look at selling him with all your oh, absolutely. rebuild, 100%. Tim Clyde, 100%. Um, and Jamal. But uh, you know, you've got some older guys there at your running back core. You went, you got a few young studs here as well. So I'd be looking. I think Acres is going to be a stud for a couple I of years so here, too. and he's so young, I man, so it's too. crazy. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I, you have the opportunity to sell a couple of these more veteran names i seasoned, guess how, seasoned yeah. veterans yeah yep. yes. so try and get a couple of receivers but at the same time again it's it's eight flex so you you aren't penalized for rostering a ton no. of running back either no. um all right so we're going on here to the six pick guy took zay flowers at nine did not love this if i remember right um no no this, you did not this was the guy so he has tom brady um Trey Lance, not a great quarterback situation. The fact that he, even here, I probably would have been taking like a chance on Hendon Hooker, right? But uh, right, yeah. Running back. Yeah, I'm not. Re- yeah, it's it's Go not ahead. a good team. I'll be very honest, it's not. And I don't know what his strategy is. I think he's he's. I feel if anything, he's just going to be a mediocre team for a very long time. Right. I mean, at, he's at got best. decent running backs at least. Hook. Um, Dalvin Cook, Tony Pollard, mm-hmm. Singletary, Damian Pierce, J.K. Dobbins. So he's got depth there. Mm. Uh, yeah. The receivers, Jerry Judy, CeeDee Lamb, not a bad combination there. Adds Zay Flowers to it, Jalen Hyatt here at this pick. But, mm-hmm. and I don't know, even I tight mean, end. I, I, he I, could have I, even yeah, used I, a tight I, end. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind the Hyatt pick, honestly, because like he's he's shooting for upside. Yeah, you know, like he, he has minded to have, he has... a bit when Hayden Hooker's Fair. there, and you have Baker right. Mayfield and. Trey Lance is your only starter, right? Like that's fair. That's fair. Hendon Hooker probably isn't going to fix that position, but at least you're kind of definitely like is is Jalen Hyatt going to trying fix? To prepare for it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you got Zay Flowers in round one. Is Jalen Hyatt going to fix this here? I don't think so. Probably right. Probably so not. Yeah. This is another case of I just don't think he had a coherent strategy. Kind of just wanted to get players he liked and. Yep. You know, and I don't really necessarily know all the future picks that these teams have. You know, I can only see the draft mm-hmm. board and the, the rosters here. But, yeah, unless he has a lot of first-round picks next year, it's, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a it's, rough it's situation. it's going to be rough for him, and I kind of want to cherry-pick some of his players, but we'll, right. we will see how yeah. that goes. <laughs> yeah, it goes, man. Yeah, it goes. So, yeah, yeah two six year. don't love what he was able to do here. All right, going on to two seven. Now, this one... I did not like this pick at all. I looked at the draft board and was like, what in the world? Like what? Yeah. What in the world is this? So loved his first round pick, got Quentin Johnson. I if I remember right, so yeah, he has Tyreek Hill, um, Michael Thomas, uh, some other receivers down here, you know, Jahan Dotson. Um, not an amazing receiving core, so I thought that adding Quentin Johnson to it was a very good addition here. Um, tight ends, you know, Hunter Henry, Gerald Everett, Sam Laporta would have been very, very nice in this position because mm-hmm. you're a tight end premium, right? One and a half yes. point tight end premium. Yes. Yep. Okay. Quarterback again, Daniel Jones, Mac Jones, the Joneses, um, even running back. Like, I think he's okay. He's got Mixon and Taylor, Najee. Like, I yeah, just, I, I'm, I'm just surprised he went. I think he wanted the handcuff. Brown. I think that's yes. It had to have yes. been that, right? Which I I get it, but I felt he probably could have got him at three seven. Yeah, I think I, I'm he, with he you. Prob- 100%. Prob- he probably could have. Yeah, this is taking so. a guy around early, and in a mm-hmm. pos- in a position of non need. Like, yes. yeah, I probably yes. would have not gone here. I would have even gone receiver, like another one, just double down on receiver, get a Josh Downs or Cedric Tillman yeah. or something like that. Yeah. His receiving core is a little little rocky right now. So, again, yeah. I don't love this pick, and that's where I can't. <laughs> rookie drafts early, man, are so much fun because things are just so wild. They're just uh-huh. so wild before consensus kind of sets in for it. So what are your thoughts on this pick? Yeah, I was shocked, actually, when <laughs> when this pick came in on Sleeper, and I was just like, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm more surprised he took him over, uh, like, A-Chain, which – would have you know like in 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 our i think in most rankings like he's like a, a top five running back you know you know so you know in in going in in, in, a, in at least the mid-second round you know like he could have taken tillman you know i've been seeing josh downs going there Jaden reed even you know like he he could have taken so many other people you know and it's and, and so many other players but he ends up taking Chase Brown, which I I do like Chase Brown. I do like him as a player, but it's just way too early. It's just it's way way too early. Right, I'm with you there. So not again. This is where having a strategy mapped out yes. going into the draft, and that's where mocking helps a lot too. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people just jump right into the rookie draft after taking months off, and you know if you're playing dynasty and you're not staying up to date at least practice a couple times before your yeah. actual your actual draft but uh yeah it's eh, eh, don't love it don't love it there no it's uh, um, yeah it's definitely rough all yeah. right so 28 here go ahead and break this one down for me all right so uh so so at 28 this guy took uh Bryce Young and Addison in the first round which i thought you know what was okay it was it was all right i mean i i know you're not in love with Bryce Young which i get but um, so, so at receiver, he has, let's see, uh, he has, he had Kurt, Kurt Samuel, Hollywood Brown, Higgins, Ayuk, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Claypool, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddle. Actually, I'm looking at the wrong team. How about I look at yeah, the right project. team, <laughs> Yeah, whew, it's been a long day. Yeah, no. So right. he has Deontay Johnson, Van Yeah, Jefferson. Deontay Johnson. Not a not great a whole 
Yeah, yeah not, not a, a whole group. lot of anybody. Yeah, this is the guy we talked about. He went heavy for for receiver. He got Bryce yes. Young um, at, at two overall, and then went just straight receivers after that. So, um, I don't hate it though. I definitely don't hate it. He definitely needs a, needs these guys. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And I I think that was a good pick because I think Downs is going to be a big PPR guy. Mm-hmm. I I really do, and I think he's going to fit well with what Richardson does, which is. He can, I mean, he, yes, he has a big arm, but I, he's going to be more accurate, you know, 10 yards in. Right. You know, yeah. hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, yep. you know, just, you know, just being honest. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting, definitely, to see what Downs does. And, you know, and, and at 208, that's perfect. perfect yeah. Point. Yep. I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, that's even low again, but uh, it is. I would definitely be taking him over Rashi Rice still. So. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> All 100%, right. So. Yeah. Pick number nine here, rolling on through. I I don't know how to feel about this one because the guy took Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs, and yes. um, you know, I is it necessary? <laughs> that's the, no, that's I, the main and question, I well, right? it, yeah, like like at running back, he has Chubb, he's Chubb Montgomery, Pierre Strong, Jalen Warren. Like it's not like he has horrible. You know, horrible guys, and and he's. I mean, he is pretty stacked at at wide receiver. I mean, they're they're aging, but right. but they're still very very good and you know very competitive at, at receiver. Mm-hmm. So um, I I I did have a another league mate say in the comments that this guy got the running back one, two, and three in his rankings, which I kind of scoffed at, but that's beside the point. It is possible. But Devin it, Achain. It is it is it is possible. And I, I think at, at two oh nine I'm I would be happy to get Achain there. I really would because I don't hate it there. I, I don't Yeah, no, I, I I think that's very appropriately rated for him. Yeah, that's I fair do. value for yes, Achain yes, because yes. The problem is all the people taking him in the first round, like at one ten, yeah, right? Or I would I would not even sniff yeah. him. I might like potentially at at the turn, maybe no. I would think about it. And, I mean Herb. I know. I you know? know. I agree. That's a here's the thing, right? It's not that that Devin Achain can't be a good player, right? But he's so small that he just has to be the outlier of outliers. And we saw this multiple times in recent years. I mean, look at James Cook. James Cook is a smaller guy, and he's bigger mm-hmm. than Devin Achain. About the same shiftiness and speed, he's just not fantasy relevant, and he probably never will be just because right. the Bills don't feel comfortable giving him a massive workload. I yeah. don't think Miami's going to give him a massive workload. Devin Achain is going to be a uh, the 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 analytics nerds. He's going to be mm-hmm. their darling for the next for his entire career. He will be. Because he's probably going to be one of the most efficient backs in fantasy he's, football. Yes, yes. But it's going to mean Jack Diddley squat because he's not going to be able to be relevant for fantasy football because he's yeah. not going to get enough touches, right? So yeah, I I, th- I think I think the magic number is I think thirteen yes. thirteen yep. carries, yep. thirteen touches, or 13 how, touches. how however yep. that yeah yeah. So if if he gets to that number, I think I, I think don't he'll see it, but yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I I don't I don't I think I think he'll hit thirteen in some games, but not enough to yeah, make not it not consistently definitely yes. Yes. definitely yes. so yeah Devin Achain I like the player and this is good value for him so don't get me wrong yes, I, I do like that quite a bit so um you know can't complain too much but again it, it does feel a little unnecessary to go Bijan Gibbs it does Achain, but it does but uh, why not like he's trying to get the right. pass catching running backs right so, so I get it I, I would it. say that he doesn't have the bet well he got Laporta in around three so I can't complain. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say I, I would probably lean Laporta here actually over Achain, but uh, but that's who he we got, got them it. both. So <laughs> yep. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Um, he did unfortunately. Yep. All right. So pick number ten here and Grudgehead again. We just talked about him. He got um he got the Josh Downs. He's been going receiver heavy, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's been it, again. I don't hate it. it I like yeah. Cedric I, I I, I really like Cedric Tillman here. Um, I, I think in one of my leagues, he, he went like at two five two six, which I thought was a little early, personally. Mm-hmm. That's just me. Um, you know, like over Jalen Hyatt and, you know, uh, uh, other of, you know, other of these uh, uh, 
tight ends and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I do like the value here. I think he's appropriately appropriately rated right here. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I think he's going to set himself up to be the second behind Amari Cooper in this offense. Yeah, the, the question is Donovan Peoples-Jones, right? Is he going to be, I think he's in a contract year this year, right? He and is, I believe so, yeah. I believe Amari Cooper's contract is still extremely expensive, but it's also about over. I think he has one more year left on his contract, so they could move on from him mm-hmm. after this season for basically free, essentially. Okay. Um, Elijah Moore just came over, so I think they are trying to retool this offense a little bit more around Deshaun Watson. Maybe mm-hmm. they keep Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper just seems to not be loved anywhere, so I do like Cedric <laughs> Tillman. I think that he's got yeah. a lot of Potential, potential upside yes long he term. does year one is going to be rough but long term we're we might be cooking with gas there so don't Absolutely. don't hate it again downs addison and cedric tillman is your first three when you need wide receivers not a bad haul yes there for awesome. uh for old grudge here. yeah 100 yeah. percent. all right pick number 11 here Jaden reed break this one down for me yeah so at at uh at, at wide receiver he has uh, Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley, he has a stack there. Um, DJ Moore, MVS, Amon Ra, Jamar Chase. You know, like he has really good wide receivers here. Um, you know, at, at running back, it's pretty light. He doesn't have anybody. I mean, he he, he does have Ramondre Stevenson, but there's not really. I mean, he 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 could have taken Tank here, um, but I think he was trying to go upside with with Jaden Reed being the number two wide receiver in green bay but <laughs> how much is that, that worth yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how much that's worth i don't even know um, if he's the number I mean, two like right i i, I they they drafted him to be the, did how. they i mean romeo dobbs was good last year christian watson right. romeo dobbs like i think Jaden reed is the number three maybe even the number four Probably. i don't even know like yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I I've seen I've I've been in leagues where he's where Jaden Reed went like beginning of the second round and it made me vomit. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like he, I, I mean, he's he rice spot. Yes, yes, yeah. I've seen him go there, and that makes me feel gross. But you know, it's it's okay value. But I think there were other players here that he could have went. I mean, he went with Dalton Kincaid at 111, which I think was a home run pick there mm-hmm. at 111, personally. So, yep. um, you know, uh, it, it's it's for his team especially. So, you know, I think I think he could have went, you know, Bigsby or even Spears or or Laporta. Well, but that's doubling up on tight end. But yeah, still, yeah, but but still, that's not a bad a, a horrible idea when he has Kittle, Kincaid, and and he could have had uh, he could have had Sam Laporta. Yeah, I'd probably so, take Laporta in a tight end premium over Jaden Reed, but yeah. again, yeah, uh, I, it's crazy. And we're about to get into round three here, but the running backs that fell are just wild. To me. Yes, Absolutely yes, wild. they are. Um, yes. All right, so then pick number twelve was actually you. You were able to yeah. get Hendon Hooker here. Hendon Hooker, yes. Um, what are your yes, What were it, your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I, I was either between Hooker or Sam Laporta. That's who I was kind of thinking. Sure. Um, because you know, I, I could I could always use more tight ends. I also thought about Tank Bigsby. I really wanted Tank Bigsby there, but I knew I needed <laughs> another I, I knew I needed another quarterback because my quarterbacks are gross, yeah. To be honest. I mean, I have Tua, which as long as he stays healthy, he's gonna be fine. Stroud is a rookie, it's gonna be rough. And I have Zach Wilson who um he he will not beat out Aaron Rodgers. That's my bold take of the off season. So, <laughs> not this so year. this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not. So I'm I'm kind of betting on Hendon Hooker, and I think I might uh I might put that carrot out to somebody and and see if they might bite on Hooker here. So on yeah. on, on a trade potentially, eh, you know. And, and I think you're gonna have to wait I, I, until next year. N- right, next off season right. would be the time to actually try and do that because yeah. He's not going to be healthy pretty much all this season, right? Or he's, if he gets right. healthy in season, he's not going to see any play time unless right. something catastrophic caps and yeah. happens, right? So I will say, though, I do like that. Looking at your tight ends, you know, you have TJ Hawkinson, Kyle Pitts, mm-hmm. and uh, Michael Mayer that you took in round one, and David Njoku yeah. and Hayden Njoku. Hurst. 
I'm actually kind of glad you didn't take Laporta and go too yeah. heavy on it. So I, yeah, I I, I kind of thought that would have been too cute, right? You know, like it 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 just would have been too many. And then I have all the tight ends, and what if nobody's biting and. And right. I'm and, and you know and and I'm starting five tight ends. So, <laughs> right. you yeah, know, it's not the great, you know, you know, greatest. Uh, no, it it yeah, feeling. it is not the greatest strategy. <laughs> so um yeah, and if if like I know you talked about Tank Bigsby, but if Hennon Hooker does hit, the upside on him versus Tank Bigsby is going to be just be oh, massive. Oh, is, is right? massive. And I think is they massive. both have kind of the same risk almost. You know, yes. maybe Bigsby has a little bit higher floor, but uh, yeah, I, I don't hate what you did there. What whatsoever so yeah 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 it, yeah overall it felt like it felt pretty safe to take hooker there and to you know and and, and to have a potential starting quarterback at at at, at, at 212 right yep so. i'm with you I'm with you okay so then going into round three we're just going to touch on these guys quickly um pretty much everyone has either drafted at this point or they're mm-hmm. just taking stabs at players and that's kind of what round three is but the fact is, we're going to talk about a few players a little bit more in-depthly on the first half of this round because this is crazy, man. Tajay Spears at 3-1. Tajay Spears at yes. 3-1. What in the world, yes. dude? Like, uh, this league is is bananas. It's wild. It's wild. Tajay Spears running back to the Tennessee Titans, you know. I get maybe people fading him because he doesn't have an ACL, but... Uh, That's what? true, but... <laughs> what are we I, doing? I, I mean... I love Tajay Spears. I, I, I have like, I feel he has that dog in him that a lot of players don't. And he has a lot of fight. And I, I I love seeing that in players and that's the players. And those are the players that I want to have on, on my fantasy team. But I'm, I'm worried about his longevity and potentially how long Derrick Henry might be there. Right. Yep. That, that, that is my biggest concern. I mean, I, 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 I had a passing thought of taking him at two twelve, but I was it, it, it. I didn't feel for my team it was worth the risk at that point. Yeah, it doesn't make a ton of sense for you. No, it it does. It doesn't. It doesn't. And I I feel if you're more win now, that Taji Spears could be a really big help to your team. Yeah, it, I wouldn't even say win now. I would say 2024. I think is Taji Spears' yeah. time to shine in yes. reality. Um, yes. Derrick Henry is great, but I think that there was all the rumors about them trading him this last off season. He's very expensive right now, and the Titans aren't really in contender form. I'll put it that way. Um, Like they they have quite a few holes. Their roster their their roster is in a little bit of shambles, money wise, with the way that they've kind of structured a lot of these salaries Mm -hmm. and and everything. So um, I could see them really trying hard to move on from Derrick Henry next year and hand it over to Tajay Spears and Hassan Haskins in 2024. So, um, right. but again, 3-1 for Tajay Spears is is good value there. Oh, I, absolutely. All right, so 3-2 then was Laporta. We talked about him a little bit already. Mm-hmm. And, you know, <laughs> I don't hate getting him at 3-2 when I would have taken him at 2-9, so... You yeah, know, just, absolutely. Just very good value there for yes. Rob. Um, gets to pair him with Pat Fryermuth and Trey McBride. So right, yeah. again, crazy good value on Sam Laporta. A hundred percent. Really, nothing else to say. Like I, I can't believe <laughs> that some of these receivers that went over Laporta. Right. Like yeah, I like Tillman and I like uh, Josh Downs, but I'm still taking Sam Laporta over. Both of them, even Jalen Hyatt, I'm That's taking fair. Laporta, right? Yeah. Um, if I need a tight end, of course, obviously. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, crazy, crazy value there. Yeah, yeah, it is, and I agree. Like it's 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 with being a tight end premium, especially like you like the tight ends are valued a lot more. And I I was I was really shocked that a tight end did not go in round two at all. I know. It, so wild. that's that was very that was very surprising to me. At so, least Laporta, I, I, like. Um, and yes. if you're following yes. on YouTube, you can see the draft board here. You can see all three rounds. But Laporta went two picks in front of Luke Musgrave. Like, what are mm-hmm. we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Yes. Yes, it's, um, it's I would say there's a much larger gap than two picks, in my opinion. But, yeah, 100%. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Again, just, just wild. So, uh, pick number three here in the third round, Tank Bigsby, another guy that fell around mm-hmm. later than he probably should have. In reality, Tank Bigsby only went about half a round later than he probably yeah. should have. 
Um, but you know, I just, I love tank and again, go check out the ETN versus tank Bigsby video that I put out yesterday to see how much I love tank, but dude, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing here? Yeah, I, I know. I, and I, I mean, if I was some of these guys at the end of the first round, I probably would have taken tank. You know, I, 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 I wouldn't have taken Jaden Reed. I mean, Tillman, I get, I, I, I get for that player you know i get that yeah and i right. i you know i i get but you know like like taking chase brown over him that's for just a handcuff for a handcuff for a potential handcuff, yes handcuff. a potential handcuff yes it's wild it is wild <laughs> dynasty doesn't have to be this hard guys like it really doesn't you don't have to hamstring but some people but some people try to big brain it which i i get i i am victim of that sometimes you know i i i try to be cute and and, and try to do something a little different and and just kind of be crazy with it just try to have fun and i end up you know shooting myself in the foot yeah so, it's, it, at least it, it's it a does low happen dollar league, right <laughs> so yeah it's not yes. it doesn't have dire consequences if you're wrong it, here, exactly but, uh, exactly yeah no it's just it, it's crazy to me but uh yeah, Tank Bigsby. Can't complain about that at 3-3. No, no. All right, break down your pick here. Who did you take? I wish I would have taken Tank Bigsby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll be very honest. I was I was really bummed out when I wasn't able to take Tank Bigsby. And one spot. Yeah, one spot, you know, at at you know, in the in the third round, you know, beginning of the third round, like I like I felt that he sniped me with Tank Bigsby. <laughs> and I, I was I was hoping people would would uh, pick up on the hype of of Roshan Johnson and go with him. But I will. Uh, but I was the potential fool with that. So to be fair, I mean, though, to be fair, yeah. he did give you Kendra in round two. So, you know, he had, that he, is, he, had to, he had to get that, one back. That on is him. very true. <laughs> that is very, very true. Like he did do me a solid in the second and he, and he sniped me in the third. So, you know, I can't be t- I'm not too sad about Johnson here because no. I, I think I think he has. He has the potential of more upside than mm-hmm. Bigsby at the moment. I you know agree. I would agree with that. Yes, yes, yes. The so, problem is we just don't know, right? And yes, yes. It could be any and, of those guys, and that's the one and, downside. And 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 there and there's so many hands to feed in that in the, in the backfield there that right. it's going to end up just being Justin Fields. So. <laughs> You know, in, in all, in all, you to be know, fair, that's kind of Khalil how... Herbert was good with Justin Fields yes, he last was. year. So he was. So um, it's yes. possible so, one of these guys steps up. You just mm-hmm. you're 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 don't know who yet. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 either going to be praying. Herbert, it's going to be Johnson, <laughs> or it's yeah, it's going to be or it's going to be Devon or 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 it's going to be Foreman. Yeah, Deontay which it Foreman. could be it, it, it and, and and it could be two of those guys, and you could have a split backfield, and it's just a nightmare. Right. So right. But again, at three four though, good value there. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Um, you're not complaining too much there. All right, three yeah. five. The only pick for this guy in yes. the draft goes Luke Musgrave. And uh, what are our thoughts here? I, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I was more like what, what, it, that was interesting because um, at Upside, tight end he has, yeah, at, at tight end he he only has Mark Andrews. So right. I get it, I get it, but I think I would have rather taken stab at uh washington uh, you know i don't i, I can I mean, see the I, argument I, for luke i, I, I would I, I get it with musgrave i get it but i think i honestly think tyler craft's the better receiver and plus with musgrave's injury history i'm really worried about that and and the green bay offense is not right. going to be the green bay offense of old yeah it's it not is gonna not run through the tight is, end position that's for sure it, it, well no it's not and, and it's not gonna pass a whole bunch either so I, I think I th- I, th- I think maybe he was trying to pair up him with uh, Jordan Love, maybe, you know, and that could be it. I don't. I mean, know. I don't hate it if you're taking a no, stab I, at yeah. one of these guys. Like if yeah, I had Musgrave and and Kraft back to back, so it's not like it's a, an egregious you know pick here. Right. But I do think that I'd rather if I needed a guy. At tight end, I'd rather take a stab on Luke Musgrave and hope that he pans out versus Darnell right. Washington, who you know is going to be ninety percent blocking. And yes, that's just the the detriment to Washington. He's just so good at it. Right, he's the right. he put it in his Twitter bio that he's the sixth offensive lineman. So lineman, <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. you're just kind of uh you're you're setting yourself up Set there, yourself up. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes. 
But, he is. you know, he could have gotten him in the free agency because uh, after only three rounds, he didn't even go off the board. So yes. a little bit of uh, gamesmanship there. So I don't hate it, but don't really love it. But at this point, though, I think your pick in the third round was the last one of value. Like after your pick, yeah. um, I don't think that anybody is really worth it's all stabs at this point, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It it really is. The only guy I think that um, didn't go in the third round here that I was a little surprised by was um, Michael Wilson with uh, the Cardinals, right? Not going at all in the third round, taking guys like Tank Dell and Butte and Palmer over him. I thought that was a little crazy, especially with all the Mm -hmm. Hopkins news that came out before this draft started. Yeah. Um, I thought that would kind of, push him further up but you know didn't end up happening so um three six here deuce vaughn pairs him with jalen hyatt and zay flowers give me your thoughts here taking a stab on somebody that's going to have less touches than devon a chain yep basically so (laughs) you know you know he he's like running back four on that team like you know, he's I could he's, see him he's moving he's, his way up to like two. I could. I get it. But Limited like, touches though. Yeah, I mean he he's gonna be behind. You know he's gonna be behind Pollard. He's gonna be behind Malik Davis. I mean he's not gonna be behind Ronald Jones. I feel confident in that. But I but, agree. I agree. You know, so you know he's running back three. He's a he's gonna be potentially a third down back if he can block it all. But I feel that I feel that most pass rushers pass rushers can jump over Deuce Vaughn at this point. So, <laughs> so he's definitely you not know, getting a hurdle. That's yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like I, I feel horrible to say that, but I, I think I would have rather taken a shot at one of these wide receivers or so, anybody else. Like, I don't think Deuce Vaughn was a super good pick by this guy. And he had a, in just like, I think he's had a, he had a very interesting draft strategy. He's picking Bad guys that don't. Sure. Yeah. Bad. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying. To I'm be nice. nice not my league. I know, I know, I know that. I know that. I don't so, have to. I don't yeah. have to play with these guys. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was interesting to say the least. So I, I wish it's, him the best. It's but not I don't egregious. Think, it's just, it's just the guys draft. It just doesn't help his team, and that's where it's yeah, just, it's, it's yes, it's yeah, it's it's just keeping him the same, and he's yeah, either exactly. gonna. He's either gonna stay picking at the six spot, or he's gonna be picking, you know, in the top three. Which if it helps happen. you to get there, sure, sure, I guess. Yeah, but uh, I guess, I guess, but I would, I feel that you're trying to play to win. <laughs> Some people just, are playing to win. Some that, people that, are that playing is, to that have is, the prettiest roster. That's the problem. That is very true. That is very true. Like I did have a guy in this league say that, like he just kind of. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't. I wouldn't say he likes to troll, but he likes to kind of cause a little chaos a little bit. Uh huh. And w- which I, I enjoy for a small dollar league, you know, to it's it's to have a guy that kind of likes to mix it up a little bit and just kind of just say, screw it. And I'm going to, you know, trade all my picks for this, you know, pick for, for this player. But mm-hmm. um, it's a it, it it is a fun strategy when you're doing fantasy. All right. So we're going to rocket fire these last picks here, because, again, there's literally nobody until your pick at the end that I actually care about in this round. Um, right. So three seven was Eric Gray um, with the New York Giants. I don't hate that just because the if anything happens with Saquon, mm-hmm. there's the potential there. Luke Schoonmaker yeah. at eight. Why he's a blocker? Like just <laughs> why? What, what is the point of this? At least at least at that point you can take your boy um, um, Washington, Washington, right? yeah. uh, or even Tucker Craft. You could take the other Green Bay. Tight end. Luke mm-hmm. Shoemaker is literally just a blocker. Yeah. Dang. And and well, I, I, I will say I, I watched him play at Michigan mm-hmm. a, a few times. And I know I know that JJ McCarthy's not the best quarterback, but he's right. better than most in the Big Ten. I sure. will say that. Sure. And Sh- Sh- Shoemaker struggled to catch passes from him. So yeah. It's yeah, not good. He, he, he does not yeah, have hands. Yeah. He he is a decent blocker no. though. So for fantasy though, it's a wasted pick. It's a completely wasted pick. Um yeah. Tank Dell at 3-9. I don't hate this one. I just don't see the upside no, on Tank either. Dell. Uh, he could be the best receiver on Houston this year, but he could also not. So he's a tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny man. So, um, yeah. But at three seven or three nine, I don't hate it too much there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, I, I do I do like that. I was I mean, if if 
the player I got at three twelve was off the board, I probably would have liked to take like to have taken Tank Dell personally sure. and just and just have a stab at it because I I think he can be a PPR guy. I think you I'd know, rather he, have he, Xavier he, Hutchinson personally, but that's I, fair. I understand it. I, that, the the draft capital yeah. is there with Tank versus Hutchinson, yes. but yes, yes, um, Butte at ten. Again, just a stab. If he can ever get back to his form of what he was, you know, pre pre draft cycle, you know, he was talked right. about as one of the best receivers in this class, and it just all kind of fell apart. So I don't hate that. There, there's definitely talent there. We'll just see if we can ever get it out of him, especially in New England. It'll be interesting to watch there. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I don't think there's going to be anything for Butte. I think he's pretty. Boutte. So, yeah, I'm, I'm this is my you. opinion. So. I'm not holding my breath, that's for sure. No, no. Trey Palmer at 11. I don't, again, Michael Wilson is still available. So, <laughs> what? Yeah. Right. Just, and and, and, it, and it's, a, it's in a very crowded Buccaneers wide receiver right. room. It can, it can open you know, up pretty it, quickly, but it, it, it could. It, it definitely could. But yeah, I mean, I think I would have taken. I'd, I'd rather have Tyler Scott have a, with Chicago. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, yes, I, just, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Some people just take people that they want to take, so yep. whatever. And then you finish it off with Zach Evans at three twelve again. It's a handcuff. You have Acre, so you're you're kind of yep. solidifying the Rams' backfield. So I like that quite a bit. And again, Zach Evans was a draft darling before mm-hmm. the combine and and kind of the draft cycle where he started to go down people's boards pretty quickly um, due to attitude and off the field stuff, but. If he can get back just like Boutte to what people saw in him, then mm-hmm. that's a potential steal in the yeah, end yeah, of the yes. third. So. Yeah, and, 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 and that's why I took him there because I, I, felt, I, I felt if he would have went into the it's, it's the waiver wire, I think I would have been outbid for him personally. I I I I, yeah, I, I think yeah, some people probably. I I I, th- I think some people would have really wanted to get him for 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 his potential. So sure, and and, and that's why I kind of wanted to swoop him up. So um, I I I will say that on the waiver wire, I I was able to pick up Tyler Scott, which I was there pretty intent yep. with. Yeah, I, yeah. I was I was I was I was pretty happy with that. Um, so I did get to add him on my team. There you go. Not bad. Not bad. I would have gone hard in the paint for uh, Wilson, but. Man, yeah, I think there's so much potential for well, that kid. Well, I, 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 I well, the commissioner kind of messed up a little bit on the waivers and opened them up when he shouldn't have quite yet, uh, and it, it was it was weird. And then and then people showed their hands quickly uh, on 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 who yeah. they wanted. So yeah, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't really feel the need to bid because they were gonna go hard. Probably yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and go yeah. hard with it. So. I, sure. I I was I was kind of out on that because of that, but you know I mean that happens every now and again. So fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, that was the round two and round three. Again, it definitely helps to have a coherent draft strategy. You know, I, we might not love every single pick that you make, but if you yeah. have a strategy. Mm-hmm. That goes so far in rookie drafts, right? Because yeah. it just it, it it helps so much, especially in the round two and round three, where you're not wasting picks, where you know you're getting Jalen Hyatt on a team that doesn't need Jalen Hyatt, right? Yes. So it's like, yes. what are you doing here? There's other needs that your team has. Go after those with the much better players available than than the guy that you take, just because you like a guy. And again, it's a, it's a smaller dollar league, so it's a little bit more, it, it's not as egregious, I would say, but mm-hmm. it's still kind of crazy to me because you want to be as right as possible, right? And you want to get, yeah. make the guys that you like, the guys that everyone else kind of likes, you know what I mean? Like um, Sam Laporta, everyone loves Sam Laporta. Why are you taking Jalen mm-hmm. Hyde over Sam Laporta? You know what I mean? So, especially in a tight end premium league. I, Right. That's where it's just it's crazy to me. And Rasheed Rice, nobody liked Rasheed Rice. Nobody still likes Rasheed Rice. So why? What, just because you like Rasheed Rice doesn't mean you should take yes. him at two three. Right. You know. So it's just it's things like that. But uh, again, at least go into it with a strategy, kind of. And that's where mock drafting a lot and paying attention. Don't take a ton of time off in the off season. You know, I know a lot of people out there. They come back into right at um 
right before the NFL draft, right? They watch mm-hmm. the draft. They they see some of these players. They get a few rundowns on these players, and oh, this guy's good. This guy's bad. And it, it's not it, it's not a full picture of the player, right? Because people shift their views on these players wildly after the NFL draft, right? And just sometimes egregiously bad. Some people will jump up draft boards. Some people will drop drop down draft boards just based on draft capital. And it's a terrible argument. It's a stupid system that people do every single year. But, you know, you need to know about these guys before the NFL draft, like bef- mm-hmm. a couple of days before the NFL draft. And you need to be engaged after the NFL draft too with mocks, things like that, just so you can kind of know how to value these guys. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest thing. You know, you see, I guarantee you that KN Sutton, who took Rasheed Rice at 2 3, Probably took a couple months off and came back, saw Rasheed Rice went in the second round of the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, this guy must be really, really good. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him as soon as I possibly can. And, uh, yeah, I just that's not the smartest way to be doing your drafts. So um, just a little piece of advice there. Make sure you're staying engaged. And I, I get it. You know, some people like yeah, to take a break. It's, it, yeah, I yeah, it. It, I yeah. It. I and and I I hear that a lot too. That that people just need a little time off. You know, right. I, I I try to stay in in and 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 just like Calvin, like I try to stay engaged at least a little bit. You know, like I might throw a trade offer here or there. You sure. know, like if the waiver, you know, I might check the waiver wire, see and just kind of see what's going on. It it, it only takes a couple minutes, right? And it's right. not like you have to be on it all every all every day, which that can be very exhausting, right? And, it, it and really I'm not saying be. you have to do it. Yeah, nonstop from the Super Bowl yep. till the draft, right? You can take yep. two months off and still yeah. come back like two weeks before the NFL draft and just mm-hmm. immerse yourself, get to know all of these players. And don't just listen yeah. to one source. Listen to three, four, five sources because especially on a draft class like this where the the evaluations vary crazily, yeah, right? So, so much, yes. Um, you kind of yes. have to make your own rankings and everything, which is fine. You know, like I love Kendra Miller, but, mm-hmm. you know, Nobody was high on Rasheed Rice. Nobody was high on Jaden Reed. Um, right. Jonathan Mingo sort of started to rise at the end there, but you mm-hmm. know, it's just you avoid some of those potential traps just because NFL teams yes. took them high, right? So, um, again, just last piece of advice there. But all in all, I like this draft for the most part. Again, a few mm-hmm. egregious picks, but any last thoughts from you? Um, I thought I did very well. Yeah, yeah, not not you know, bad for you know. Uh, I I I, I was pretty I, yeah I was pretty happy with everything in in, in everything I did. You know, mm-hmm. I thought that I was trying to look out a couple years ahead because you know like my team is pretty garbage, <laughs> and it 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 is it's not super great, and I'm kind of bummed about it. But um, <laughs> but it, it's a work in prog it's a work in progress, and that's what I signed up for when I did this league. Was I kind of wanted to do a rebuild? I didn't really want to. I mean, I wanted to be competitive, but right. You know, you know, like you kind of want to grind a little bit in some leagues where in in, in others, like once you have a good team, you kind of want to keep it forever and just kind of right. keep it going. Yep. So, yeah. Right. So, um, no, you know, now I will say, and this is not just because you're my co-host here, but uh, like I will say you maximize the value of all mm-hmm. of those picks, except for the one five. Yes. I would say, you know, we, that, we talked about fair. that last time. Yes. But yes. Uh, go check out our, our difference of opinion and why I'd be looking at Quentin Johnston personally over JSN, but yeah. again, it's not egregious. You're, you're, yeah. you know, it's just a personal preference. Yeah. You got the homerism <laughs> anyway, but yeah, yeah. And, other than and, that. And, and, and yeah, and, and I'm okay with that. And I've, I've had to deal with that. Like um, I've had to deal with that in, in, in previous years where I, I try to get cute and take uh, Trey Sermon over Jalen Waddell. Right. And I am very sad about that. So <laughs> right, right. I am still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So no, but other than that though, I think for every other pick, like Stroud at four, he's my number mm-hmm. two guy there. You know, Kendra Miller, uh, my number three running back, Marvin Mims, Mims my number is, five yeah, up receiver. Yep. So it's just uh I think you, you nailed it with all these other other I, picks. I, thank so. you. I, I appreciate um, that. <laughs> let let Dale know your thoughts on his yeah, draft please, on please Twitter do. or on YouTube in the comments down below. And again, if you can, thank you for making it this far in the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell the mm-hmm. podcast to one of your friends just trying to grow it all off season long. We got all kinds of content coming up and we're going to be hitting the ground running 
all off season. And just a quick reminder, in the month of July, we're going to be going through, I'm going to be dropping a video every single day, all 31 days, and then the first day of August. Um, we're going to be going through all 32 teams and recapping all the changes that were made, coaching staff, players, free agents, rookies, everybody that came onto this team and left this team for every single NFL team and uh, some of the dynasty implications from those changes. So uh, we'll be going through some of the contract stuff as well, but these are going to be fun bite-sized pieces of content, you know, hopefully 10 to 15 minutes for each and every team. Uh, but we're just going to be recapping all that for you guys, just to make sure that you are aware and you don't forget who all was added to these teams. Um, yeah. So that's going to be coming in July. Until we get there, we're going to keep grinding all off season long. Again, hit us up on Twitter, on YouTube. If you have any questions, ask any, any advice that you guys are looking for. But until next time, thank you guys so much for joining us and have a good night.